All right, let's talk about the uterus. So the layers first. On the outside of the organ, the serosa or adventitia will be the perimetrium. The majority of the uterus is made up of myometrium, which is this dark pink area here. It's mostly smooth muscle. This dark purple area here is the stratum basalis. And the lighter staining area is the stratum functionalis facing the uterine cavity. And it's important to know the blood supply of the three layers here. So in the myometrium, we have the arcuate arteries, and the blood is going to go into the straight arteries of the stratum basalis. And from there, it'll go into the spiral arteries or coiled arteries of the stratum functionalis. So let's take a closer look. You can see here in the myometrium, uh, lots and lots of smooth muscle. And in the stratum basalis, we can see lots of uterine glands and the straight arteries. So when you're differentiating the two, just look at the epithelium. So if you have a columnar epithelium like here, uh, you know you're looking at some uterine glands. So these guys. And when you see the simple squamous cells of endothelium, you know you're looking at blood vessels. So it looks like a group of four uh, straight arteries over here. And now moving on to the stratum functionalis, which is the lighter uh, staining area. Again, you have uterine glands. So these guys right here, based on their epithelium. And here are some spiral arteries. And it's important to recognize that this is in the proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle. And you can tell by the shape of the glands. So when they're straight like this, you know you're in the proliferative phase. And here's a slide of the uterus in the secretory phase. So again, just to review the layers, we have lots and lots of myometrium out here. Uh, this darker purple area here is the stratum basalis. And then beyond that, we have the stratum functionalis. And we know this is the secretory phase because of the shape of the glands. Whereas before, the glands were kind of uh, nice and smooth at the apical border of the epithelium. Now you see it's, uh, it's called a corkscrew where it's going back and forth. And just to confirm that this is indeed a uterine gland, just look at the epithelium again. You see that these are columnar cells. So this is not um, a blood vessel. So if we're looking for the blood vessels, the spiral arteries in this stratum functionalis, uh, here's a good example of them right here. You can see multiple cross sections here. You can imagine the spiral arteries kind of going in and out of the plane of the computer screen. And you can see how that looks very different from a uterine gland like this. Uh, some more examples over here. Uh, you have multiple cross sections, spiral artery. Compared to a uterine gland. This one right here. So the next phase, uh, menses, this stratum functionalis is going to uh, shed off because the spiral arteries will actually constrict and this area becomes ischemic. But the stratum basalis will remain. Uh, something that helps me remember the changes that go on in the uterus. Uh, you, in a normal, healthy, fertile uterus, you should always have the stratum basalis because this is what regenerates all of this part, right? So if you lose the stratum basalis, you're going to have issues with fertility. So even when uh, when we go to the placenta next, the stratum basalis is still going to be there, and it's going to be in direct contact with the decidua basalis. And after birth, when the placenta is removed, you still have the stratum basalis. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get pregnant again, right? There's one more slide of the uterus uh, that shows just the stratum basalis remaining after uh, the stratum functionalis has shed during menses. So just take a look at that. And here we have the placenta. So there's a lot going on here, uh, but I found that two diagrams that are very helpful to understand this uh, are this from the lab manual and also this picture from the PowerPoint. This is the maternal side of the placenta. So on the left side we have uterus and going towards the right is where the fetus would be. So before the endometrium was made up of the stratum basalis and the stratum functionalis, uh, but in the pregnant female we have a stratum basalis and decidua basalis that are making up the endometrium. 
and we're going to find the uterine glands again. Uh, and don't forget about the uh, blood supply. And notice that before the uterine glands were oriented more this way towards the cavity, uh, whereas it's kind of rotated 90 degrees here now. So I'm going to zoom into this area on the microscopy slide to go over the different parts. So it should be right about here. So if you see the smooth muscle, like these pink bands over here, you know you're in the myometrium. So just past that is the stratum basalis. And then we have the decidua basalis out here. So in terms of the separation between the two, uh, I don't know if there's like a really fine line for it, but you can look at where the glands are placed. Uh, but first let's differentiate the, the glands from the blood vessels. So in order to do that, again, you have to look at the epithelium, right? So this is a... Uh, either columna or cuboidal epithelium, propion to the lumen. So this is one of the uterine glands. Same as this one over here, but this one is actually a blood vessel. Because look how much thinner the epithelium is over here. Uh, don't let this fool you, these are not red blood cells. These are probably secretions from the glands. And in this area we can also find some uh, fetal giant cells and deciduous cells, so let's look for those. So going back to our slide, if we zoom in around here, uh, the deciduous cells are going to be these uh, sort of plain looking light blue cells here. Um, it's not going to be these darker ones. These are actually the invading tropoblast cells coming from the fetus. You can see them, they look very similar to the ones out here. Um, and in fact, if you see a bunch of them together, don't, that's what will uh, that's what the fetal giant cell looks like. So this is one of the fetal giant cells. I think there's another few examples of fetal giant cells up here. And we're also going to see lots of a uh, fibrinoid at the border between the maternal and fetal tissue. So that will be this dark pink area, this material out here. And now let's go over the uh, chorionic villi. So some of the chorionic villi are free in the intravillous space, whereas others are anchored uh, onto the decidua basalis. And these anchoring villi are um, connected by cell columns, which are made up of the peripheral trophoblast cells. Mm -hmm. And the trophoblast cells are lining the outside of the chorionic villi. Uh, I'll talk about more of them. I'll talk about them a little more in the last slide because they're easier to see. And if we go back to our microscopy slide, all of these little islands of tissue here are either a stem villus or one of its branches. So the larger ones are probably the stem. So the larger piece over here or over here, and then the smaller pieces will be the little branches. So these, these smaller bits of tissue. And all of this white space is intervillous space. So this is where the maternal blood will be. Uh, we don't really see the maternal blood on this slide. I'm guessing it's been washed out. But the interface between the trophoblast and the intervillous place, this is where the nutrient and gas exchange will happen. So let's take a look at one of the anchoring uh, villi and uh, the cell column. So the example that's in the PowerPoint, I believe, is this one. So here's the anchoring villus. This is the cell column over here made up of those peripheral trophoblast cells. Uh, let's look for another example. So this one right here, there's another stem villus that's anchoring. And this blue area around it, this is the cell column. We also see some deciduous cells. And it looks like this one over here has three nuclei, could be a fetal giant cell. So in the last slide, we saw the maternal side of the placenta. Now let's look at the fetal one. So if we zoom in down here. So the fetus is going to be going towards the bottom of the slide, uh, which makes this the amnion. And up here is the chorion. Uh, this separation is artifact, so you can ignore that. Uh, you can see that this is a cuboidal epithelium. And same with the edge of the chorion. So use this uh, picture to guide you when you're looking at the slide. So this is one of the large stem villi. Um, the smaller pieces will be the branches of the villi. And the white space is where uh, you'll find a maternal blood for gas exchange. Uh, down here we have a fetal blood vessel. 
And these look like they actually might be red blood cells, yeah. And now let's take a closer look at the trophoblast cells because these are super important. So we can zoom into pretty much any of these villi and find that the trophoblast cells are lining uh, the outside of them. So the trophoblast is made up of two kinds of cells. There's a syncytial trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast. So the syncytial trophoblast is called that because it's, uh, it's, it's a syncytium. All the cytoplasm is uh, merged together and it has lots and lots and lots of nuclei. Whereas the, the cytotrophoblast cells are distinct and they're a little bit larger. They're just deep to the syncytial trophoblast and uh, they're not going to be as numerous. So let's look for a better spot here. Okay. So again, I'm marking with my pen where the syncytial trophoblast is. So over here, these are all syncytial trophoblast cells. These are the ones making beta HCG. And we have a bunch of cytotrophoblast cells. And the cytotrophoblast cells are going to be making either more cytotrophoblasts or they will become syncytial trophoblast cells. And in the villi, you're going to see lots and lots of blood vessels, as you would expect, because there's going to be a lot of gas exchange uh, going across the border of the uh, trophoblast cells. So here we can actually see one of the blood vessels with red blood cells in it. Um, there's some endothelial cell nuclei. And another thing to notice are the Hofbauer cells. Uh, these are fetal macrophages. So when you're looking for them, uh, I would just look for something that looks like a fried egg, uh, sunny side up. So you have like the, nu the nucleus would be like the yolk, for example. Going back to our slide, looks like we have a few Hofbauer uh, cells here. And that's it for this video. So good luck on exams and let me know if you have any questions.